Imagine you're Sarah, a mom looking into the eyes of your two excited kids buckled in next to you. You're on the brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8, the iPhone of the skies. Your heart swells with the roar of the engines and the lift of the plane, carrying your family toward a much anticipated vacation. Just when you start daydreaming about sandy beaches and laughter, a sudden plunge snaps you back to reality. The plane nosedives. What would you do when the very technology built to safeguard your life turns into your worst nightmare? This was not a one-time horror story. It was the fate for the souls aboard Lion Air Flight 610 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. The Boeing 737 MAX 8 was heralded as the future of aviation, a symbol that spoke of our triumph over skies and distances. Promising unparalleled fuel efficiency and cutting-edge technology, it was the iPhone in a world of flip phones. But that promise came crashing down, quite literally, taking 346 lives with it in two catastrophic accidents. What went from a marvel of engineering turned into a macabre twist of fate, a betrayal that shook the world's faith in technology, engineering, and oversight. Today, we're pulling back the curtain to reveal the secret systems and flawed decisions that led to this global tragedy. Are you ready to explore how a symbol of human ingenuity could become a tomb in the sky? As the year 2000 dawned, aviation giants Boeing and Airbus were in a fierce battle for market dominance. Remember the Concorde? That supersonic jet that promised to change air travel? Or what about the DC-10 cargo door disaster in 1972? History shows us that the race to be the best can sometimes lead to devastating shortcuts. When Airbus launched the A320neo in 2010, boasting a 15% reduction in fuel consumption, it was like throwing down the gauntlet in front of Boeing. The message was clear, adapt or become obsolete. Under this immense pressure, Boeing had to act and act fast. In 2011, they announced the 737 MAX project. This wasn't just an upgrade, it was a revolutionary redesign. Imagine taking a classic car and fitting it with a modern, fuel-efficient engine and state-of-the-art features. That's what Boeing aimed to do with the 737 MAX. By building upon the existing 737 design, they hoped to expedite the plane's market launch. The new 737 MAX came equipped with larger and cutting-edge twin CFM Leap 1B engines to enhance fuel efficiency and range, and featured Boeing's new split scimitar winglets for optimized aerodynamics. It was akin to strapping jet engines onto a racehorse. The aviation industry was captivated. However, the size of the new 737 MAX engines differed considerably from the older NG engines, necessitating a supplementary system for balance and control. Enter MCAS, or the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. But what many don't realize is just how crucial and precarious this system was meant to be. MCAS was not just an add-on, it was a linchpin. The system was designed to counteract the additional lift generated by the larger, more forward-positioned engines. Picture a high-performance sports car suddenly fitted with much heavier, more powerful engines. You'd need to adjust the steering and suspension to maintain control at high speeds, right? That's what MCAS was for the 737 MAX. It was supposed to automatically adjust the plane's angle in specific flight conditions to ensure that the aircraft remained stable and prevented stalling, a pilot's worst nightmare at cruising altitude. This was particularly crucial during steep turns or when the plane was flying slowly with a high angle of attack. Think of MCAS as an invisible hand, subtly correcting the plane's orientation when it sensed that things might go awry. But in designing MCAS, Boeing made several critical errors. Firstly, the system relied heavily on data from a single sensor, a gamble akin to having a tightrope walker perform with no safety net. Secondly, Boeing opted to keep pilots largely in the dark about MCAS, as they streamlined the transition training for pilots who had previously flown older 737 models. This dangerous combination of limited data and limited awareness transformed MCAS from a guardian angel to a grim reaper. Imagine a state-of-the-art fire alarm system designed to protect you in your home, but ends up trapping you inside a burning hell with no escape. Together, these elements wove a complex tapestry of ambition, innovation, and ultimately catastrophic failure. On October 29, 2018, in Jakarta, Indonesia, the Boeing 737 MAX 8 of Lion Air Flight 610 accelerates down the runway. The aircraft, a mere infant at two months old, embodies what many consider the zenith of aviation technology. Its turbines hum with promise as it takes off, climbing to an altitude of around 5,000 feet. But just minutes after takeoff, an ominous cascade of events unfolds. A faulty angle of attack sensor triggers the MCAS, thinking the plane is about to stall. It forces the plane's nose downward. The black box recordings pierce the silence, 
Commander, something's wrong with our control. The first officer's voice wobbles, a dark foreshadowing of the ordeal ahead. They counter the system, pulling back on the stick to raise the nose. They disengage and then re-engage the autopilot, yet the MCAS remains an unyielding foe. They scramble for the manual, papers shuffling, buttons pressing, but it offers no clear recourse. The air traffic control can do nothing but listen, a silent witness to the unfolding disaster. It's fighting me! The captain's voice cracks, filled with a mix of sweat and desperation. Disconnect the trim. His shout resonates through the cockpit, but time and technology are against them. With harrowing speed, the plane plummets into the Java Sea, hitting the water at 450 miles per hour. A direct nosedive, a horrific impact, and a tragic end. 189 lives lost. The aftermath reverberated across the globe, a chilling wake-up call in modern aviation. Yet the universe had a darker plotline. The stage was set for another disaster. Five months later, on March 10, 2019, the unthinkable happened again. In Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the gleaming Boeing 737 MAX 8 of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 prepares for takeoff. The pre-flight checks are completed, and the engines roar to life. As the plane ascends, the pilots navigate the skies, unaware that they are heading into a chillingly familiar tragedy that unfolded just five months earlier. The black box recordings serve as an unnerving testimony. Just after liftoff, the cockpit is suffused with an ominous tension. Pitch up! Pitch up! The captain's voice is laced with alarm. The words like a premonition that the MCAS system, designed for safety, has been triggered again by faulty sensor data. The plane starts nosedive, a behavior no pilot ever wants to experience. As the pilots struggle to fight the MCAS and climb to an altitude of 8,600 feet, the first officer's hands scramble through the pages of the manual. Each page flip as heavy as a heartbeat. What's the procedure? He wonders aloud, his voice tinged with desperation. But there's no time to troubleshoot the way they'd like to. Let's cut off the trim. The captain's command is decisive, but the MCAS system responds with a malevolent disregard for human life. It forces the plane's nose down again, obstinate and relentless. Dual input, the captain exhorts his first officer. Pull with me. They both pull back on their control columns with the might of their training and experience, attempting to override the rogue system. The ground surges up to meet them in a terrifying rush. Despite their valiant struggle, the plane collides with the Earth at an almost inconceivable 700 miles per hour, leaving a crater that mars not just the landscape but the very essence of trust in aviation safety. And so, the world would grieve yet again. The Federal Aviation Administration would later confirm what many had suspected. One system, MCAS, was the dark thread linking these two catastrophic failures in aviation history. Imagine a ripple in a pond that turns into a tsunami. The 737 MAX incidents were no mere ripples. They were earthquakes in the ocean of public trust, sending waves of doubt that washed over continents. From Canada's vast forests to China's bustling cities, leaders questioned not just Boeing, but the very foundation of aviation safety. It's as if we'd discovered the North Star had shifted, and now sailors and explorers were left drifting in an uncharted sea. Regulatory bodies were put under the microscope, and the ethics of aviation engineering became the talk at dinner tables, far removed from airplane hangars and corporate boardrooms. MCAS, meant to be the jewel in the 737 MAX's crown, became its Achilles heel. What went wrong? The system was balanced on a knife edge relying solely on one sensor. It's akin to a tightrope walker juggling chainsaws while blindfolded, impressively daring but devastatingly dangerous. The tragedy unfurled when regulatory oversight was compromised. Did the price tag of retraining pilots truly outweigh the priceless cost of human lives? This was the moment the narrative twisted, the climax where ambition turned to ashes. History has a cruel way of repeating itself. The 737 MAX tragedy sounded an eerie echo of past failures like the DC-10 disaster. Imagine aviation as a winding road. It feels like we've made a U-turn and are heading back to the reckless past where progress outranked prudence. Are we, as a society, suffering from collective amnesia, forgetting the bitter pills of past lessons? Fast forward to 2023. The 737 MAX is under the microscope, scrutinized with a lens so focused it could spot a needle in a haystack. Boeing's coffers have lightened by billions, but has the weight of responsibility truly set in? We stand at a crossroads. Will we pave a new path prioritizing safety, or will we reroute back to the reckless roads of old? As we crane our necks skyward, watching planes dot the azure canvas, we must ask ourselves, are we forging a renaissance in aviation safety or setting the stage for another tragedy? Let the names of those 346 souls lost be etched in our collective memory, a haunting reminder of the grave cost when ambition blots out humanity. As we soar higher and faster into the future, let's anchor ourselves with the weight of ethical responsibility, ensuring that our reach for the stars doesn't lead to another fall from grace. 